the Chavarah movement uh, arose really in the mm, late 60s, uh, as I would say, as part of the countercultural movement in general, the sort of left countercultural movement in the United States. And the particular uh, context, I think it was most, I think it arose initially, I, I think this is correct, uh, out of people who came from largely conservative uh, movement backgrounds. And it was a reaction against the alienation of large suburban synagogues where, you know, that were getting bigger and bigger and bigger and they were like uh, performance spaces uh, where people would go to show off their clothes or I don't know what they would do, but it didn't feel like anything that had anything to do with a spiritual life. The kind of mantra we had was that the people you prayed with should be the people you studied with, should be the people you did politics with. Um, so the New York Hamura, um, which was the first one that I was a part of, I joined with my then husband in 1970. Um, we would meet uh, once a week on, I think, Thursday nights. We met, we would have a potluck supper and have a discussion about whatever, something or another. We would get together however many people wanted to on Shabbos morning and do some kind of davening. Um, we started classes if there were things people wanted to learn. And then we did politics together. We went down where there were, was during the era of Vietnam, anti-Vietnam War demonstrations. We went down to Washington many times together as a group and marched against the war. Or we would be in demonstrations in New York, stuff like that. So it really was a very intense, intentional community. My sense is there are many fewer of these kinds of chavarot that are still in existence or being creative, being created. Um, that idea that if you see a need, you should fix it, you know, you should do something, make it self-help kind of, but not individual self-help, community, collective self-help. That's not such a big part of our culture. Any, I mean, you don't find that out there very much. So there aren't all that many people now, I think, who are interested in, let's say, joining a Chavara. We, we've had members who have moved away or whatever. It's not been so easy to fill it up because most people are not interested in putting in the time and energy that it takes to be part of a collectively run community. They'd rather just go to shul and, you know, there will be a rabbi there and an administrative director or whatever you call them, people who take charge and you just have to show up. If you're part of a chavara, part of a community, you actually have to do something. You have to contribute to keep it going. There is now, I think, a new wave of them actually. Uh, Certainly in New York and Washington, they're not called so much chavurot, they're called minyanim. Uh, and they're, they're forming basically more narrowly around uh, prayer experiences. But I think for a lot of those people, the community part of it is also really important. And the idea is that they're, again, self-created, self-sustaining, um, and not part of an institutional structure something I find that very compelling and uh, you know and obviously other people do too not everybody but you know it's one model for how to do a Jewish life